I think we're on. Okay, sorry. Anyway, good af good it's Sunday afternoon. This is December 29th, I think it is. Whatever Sunday is. <laughs> anyway, just want to make a short video of uh, my new antenna. I, uh, <laughs> I made a magnetic loop antenna. There it is. And I got it running on a battery. I'm out here. And I just made a few contacts. Anyway, and it, so to my surprise, it actually works. <laughs> Anyway, interesting thing about the uh, magnetic loop antenna, it's very narrow banded. You got to really tweak it in. But uh, I think this is going to be the antenna I'm going to take with me on my long trail hike. I think with the cable and everything, it probably comes in at about a pound. So I will deal with that. Anyway, I just wanted to show this to you. I'm pretty happy about it. And. Uh, Talk to you through the antenna. Uh, that's the capacitor box. The co the uh, is, we use just the shield of the coax. The center conductor is not connected. And I'm using CPVC for the support. And it's, it's sitting on a buddy pole stand that I use, but I won't be taking that with me. And I will strip off some of this stuff for the hike and make it a little more lightweight. I got some ideas to lighten it up. This is just the setup for uh, the experiment. There's my house, by the way, for you people who want to see my house. Anyway, here we go. A wreath with the palm trees. You gotta love Florida. <laughs> anyway, that's my uh, antenna. Kind of excited about it. I had to... I. I had a problem when I first built it. The SWR wouldn't get down below 1.7. One, uh, 1.7. I dropped it down. And I thought about it and thought about it. And it's really basically a transformer. When you consider the inner loop and the outer loop, it's just a transformer. So I figured, let me play with the loop length of the center conduct, of the smaller one. And I what I did was I stripped back some of the coax and used alligator clips and kept clipping up and down and it came into 1.0. One dot, one dot <laughs> I said, well, that's my issue. And then I cut it to the right length, soldered it up, and I can get on uh, tw fit, let's see, 15, 15, 10, 15, 20, uh, 12, 17. I'm on 17 right now, so it tunes up really good in those bands. So I will, should be able to uh, operate, get my contacts, and get it to the spider web net, which is my prime concern. I, on this, on the spider web net frequency of 14347, it's a perfect match. So that was my goal, and I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe I'll actually go up frequency. I'm operating only at. <coughs> Let me get down here. Sit down here. You see, I got it at 22 watts. I don't know if you can read that. Let me see if you can get it at 22 watts. That's the maximum I want to go to. If I go any higher than that, sometimes it arcs over. And I'm going to make sure I'm not on a frequency somebody's using. Let me get off frequency here. And look at the SWR there. Okay, let me. I'm going to have to hold this in one hand and we'll, we'll tune it. We'll see it tuned. There you go. I'm tuning. I'm tuning there. Up. So I got about, seeing about 19 watts up, one back, and the SWR meter on the radio is flat. So that's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. N2SQ. That's my get back over here. But I made a, I've been sitting out here making I made a few contacts. 
I made, I didn't do a very good job of logging, you scribbled them in, I made about five contacts. Massachusetts and Connecticut, one in Connecticut, anyway. So they're over a 1,500 mile contact. So I'm, and they're getting, they hear me, they hear me good enough to make a copy, but the signal strength is up. An S5 is what, an S5, I think it was an S8 was the highest I got, but that's pretty good for 20 watts. Anyway, Zen 2SQ sitting out here in front of my house, just playing radio. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm having fun.